Hello guys, I'm Vishnu, I'm the founder and CEO of Ente. Hi, I'm Lawrence and I'm the machine learning engineer at Ente. Ente is a private cloud to store, share and pass down your photos and videos. Quick show of hands, how many of you folks use Google or Apple Photos here? Oh wow. Okay, so <laughs> what you're trying to achieve in terms of end user experience is very similar. But the paths that we're taking are fundamentally different from Google or Apple. Unlike Google, Ente is end-to-end -end encrypted, which means only you have access to your own photos and videos. And unlike Apple, we have apps for every platform. So you can access and share your photos on Android, iOS, web, desktop, Linux, and we even have an app for the terminal. And unlike both Apple and Google, we are completely open source. So if you wish, you can run Ente on your own servers. So what we're trying to do here with photos is similar to what Mozilla did to browsers 20 years ago. 20 years ago, there were a billion internet users and Mozilla made sure that all of us had the privacy, freedom, and accessibility we deserved. And 20 years later, there are two billion of us clicking photos and we're trying to ensure the same level of privacy, freedom, and accessibility to our memories. And fun fact, we actually click five trillion photos every year which means since I've started talking, we've already clicked like five million photos. And the problem with keeping all of these photos in a walled garden like Apple is that you really can't access your own data outside of their ecosystem. And this is ridiculous if you think about it, because this is data that is very private to you, very personal to you, which has now been locked in. And the problem with Google is a bit different. It is that they stand to massively benefit by violating the privacy of your data, because this is your photos and videos, it's a mode that only they have access to. So it gives them the ability to deliver the best computer vision models in the future. Now we wanted to show just how big and creepy the problem can become with these large vision models. So to do that, we created a side project called They See Your Photos. And the main idea was just to showcase uh, how much data can be derived from a single image. Uh, it's a website so you can check it out for yourself after the presentation with your own photos, but for now, uh, we have an example picture here of a dad with his two younger children. Uh, the first thing to note, at least for me, I found very interesting is just even the tiniest detail can be picked up. So the G that's tattooed on his arm is easily picked up. Also, when it comes to emotions and facial expressions, all of that is understood by, by the model. Um, and in general, it's good to keep in mind that there's so much data already embedded in images, right? Not just the location, the exact timing of the photo, which device was used to take it. There's a lot of metadata there. And all of this is still just one image. Now imagine you take an entire photo library and you analyze all the images and you stitch all of the information together. That's basically what happens when you give your photos to big tech. Um, we now live in a time where you can be completely profiled purely on your photos uh, from things like race and socioeconomic status all the way down to the tiniest details and your most private memories and emotions. And we think that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the problem is not technology, right? The problem is the use of technology. AI is not evil. In fact, AI can actually be used to derive meaning out of your photos because at the end of the day, the reason we click photos is so that we can go back in time and rediscover all those precious memories. And at Ente, we really want to facilitate all of that. Now, the issue is that because we're based on, like we're built with end-to-end -end encryption by default, it's actually really tricky to accomplish that. It's a very hard technical problem to combine AI and privacy. But luckily, we've been able to do it, introducing <laughs> Ente's private AI. So here's the... High level overview, uh, very simplified, but the main idea is, again, we know nothing on the server, uh, and all of the machine learning magic happens locally on the user's device. Fully automatic, without the user even noticing it, and after all the analysis is done, uh, the results are again encrypted, put back on the server, with a key that only the user has access to. So privacy is guaranteed, but you still have the nice features that you want. If you want to know more about how we did this, we have a white paper up at nta.io slash ml with all of the technical details, but it's too much for this pitch. But let's see in action what it actually looks like. So inside our, the NT app, you can navigate to the discovery tab. There's already a bunch of uh, predetermined categories that you can check out, but if you have a specific query, you can use the search bar. So say you're interested in tracking photos, you can search for that. And then, not just any tracking photos, you're interested in tracking with you and Emily together. 
And then while you're searching for those, you just realize that one track in California, that was actually so special. So you want to get back to that one memory, that one photo. And using the app, that's easily possible. So to reiterate, everything you saw was running completely locally on device. and has no access to your photos or videos or your search queries. And we released this feature the last week, but we've been around for a while. We have over 100,000 users who have stored over 100 million photos with us so far. And each of these photos are replicated across three different data centers across the globe. One of them is in an underground shelter in Paris. And all of our source code, including our infrastructure and the machine learning frameworks, are completely open source. So by consumer app standards, we are fairly popular on GitHub. And we've been growing healthily month over month. And over the last five years, we've built NT as a sustainable business based over customer subscription revenue. And the pricing plans are very similar to other clouds, if you're familiar with them. And thanks to the revenue from these subscriptions, we are able to feed a stellar team of 10 folks. Some of us have worked at Big Tech in the past and are not very proud of it. But here we are trying to do the right thing, which is to build a company that can outlive the people behind it. Because one of the huge reasons you actually click photos is so that you can pass it down to the next generation so that they can look back at it and, and relive the moments that you've shared with them. Which means from an engineering perspective, we have to make private AI accessible so that we can get the best out of our photos without sacrificing your privacy. And from a design perspective, the problem statement is to deliver a product that provides a social feed that is actually private, so that it's a safe space wherein you can share your memories, and at the end of the day, photos are clicked so that you can share them. And this is a very lofty goal that we're working towards, and we're very grateful to Mozilla for giving us a grant and putting us on the stage. And our ask out of you at this point is firstly to be very mindful about the sanctity of the memories you're making with your loved ones. And secondly, to take control of your data because all of us deserve privacy, all of us deserve freedom. And yeah, please go to enter.io and check out the product. And if you like it, spread the word and convince your loved ones to free their memories from big tech. Thank you. <laughs>